This is a short video to show you how to use the WISE USB firmware tool to re-image a Dell WISE thin client. So the first step we'll need to go is go out to the WISE website and go under the support section and look for downloads to get the WISE USB firmware tool. You'll see there's two sections, there's product evaluation and product downloads. Make sure you select the product downloads and look in the active section and inside of here you should see the WISE USB firmware tool. Go ahead and select that. Uh, the first item in the list should be the latest version of the firmware uh, tool. So let's go ahead and save that um, down to a local system. And you can also see in the document section you can see the user's guide. So um, there will be more detailed instructions on how to use the tool and some of the more advanced settings inside the user guide. So when you get the USB firmware tool make sure you also uh, download the user's guide that goes with it. So um, I had previously downloaded the firmware tool onto my machine, so I'm going to go ahead and run it. Um, one thing it's important to do is make sure that you run as an administrator. I happen to be running this from my local Windows 7 workstation, um, but I'm going to go ahead and run as an administrator. Even though I am a local administrator already, I've just found that um, doing this step makes things work a little smoother. Um, it'll bring up this GUI here, and I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the operating system. Again, I'm using Windows Embedded Standard 7 and I'm going to update the device and I'm going to choose to do the BIOS and the CMOS. Um, the next thing it's asking me for is actually the image that I'm going to put on the system. Um, I'll go ahead and go out to the WISE web page again, go back to the support download section and under the same section now you'll need to look under the uh, product downloads under the active products for the particular model of device that you're going to re-image. So in my case I'm going to re-image a Dellwise Z90D7. If I go ahead and search in there it should bring up the latest version of the image for this. In this case it happens to be build 832 um, image for this device. And it's, notice it's 4096 so it's a 4 gig image um, that will go onto my system. And the download itself uh, when I select that I do need to accept the license agreement. Um, and you'll see the compressed image or the zip file is about um, 2.7 gigs. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I downloaded it uh, previously. So now that I'm at this point, I'm going to actually browse out and it's going to ask for an RSP file, which expanded out. If I didn't have an RSP file for some reason, I could switch the drop down and config and find a XML file that may be in the same folder. Um, I'll go ahead and go back to the RSP file which is the default which should be in the image you get from the web page and now I'm going to click on next it notices that I don't have a USB drive in my system yet so I'll go ahead and plug in I happen to have a 16 gig uh, USB thumb drive available I'll plug that in there now you can see that's my G drive um, and available on my system so now if I go back to the wise USB firmware tool and click on refresh I have that as an option I'll click next um, now it'll actually begin to format that drive and put the proper partitions and boots on there and copy over the image. Um, this may take several minutes during this phase um, and it may actually go into a non-responding for several minutes. So please make sure that you're patient um, while it's going through this phase. Uh, for the recording of this video I actually do pause it a few minutes. It took me about uh, four or five minutes at this non-responding screen. But eventually um, as you go through this screen it should be copying it over formatting the drive and eventually you will get a uh, the dialog will come back and tell you that it has uh, is done and you can click on the finish button it's also pointing out here that the instructions you need as far as tapping the P key on the actual thin client so when I click on finish it actually has ejected that uh, drive from my system so if I go over to my uh, Windows Explorer I no longer see that D drive even though it's attached to my system um, the system the USB firmware tool actually ejected it so it's not visible now I'm going to take it out of my uh, Windows 7 local machine that I was using to create the tool and I'm going to plug it into my Dellwise Z90 D7 that I'm using uh, which happens to be this system. It happens to be on. It, it doesn't really matter. I could have the system off at this point. Um, I may not even have a valid image on it at this point. Uh, but I did put the USB key in there. And now I'll go ahead and shut down my Z90 DE7 and restart the system. The important step here, now that I have the USB drive inserted into the system, is that as it starts to boot, I'm going to tap the P key. The P key will bring up a 
one-time boot menu system and you can see here where I've got the local flash um, network boot or the USB drive I selected the USB drive and now it's booting from my actual thumb drive and it brings up this message again telling um, that it started the um, critical operation in progress and I'll have one more chance where I can uh, abort if I want to or I can continue on so once it goes through here it'll bring up and it says that uh, do you wish to um, overwrite the system I'm gonna say yes because what's happening now is I'm copying the image onto my Z90 D7 and from the image that I downloaded from the web and put on my USB stick um, so you'll see it'll go through this uh, through the progress bar several times when it gets to the um, progress bar that it says that it's actually um, upgrading the image from USB to flash um, this progress bar will be the longest and, and again takes several minutes so when I get to about 5% I'm gonna pause my recording and then there now I have picked it up after 95% um, so that would be take several minutes to get through this portion of it and once this image is put on flash um, it'll go ahead and tell me that it's going to reboot and update the BIOS on the system now again that was because I selected that option when I created my USB stick I chose that I'm going to upgrade the image the BIOS and the CMOS um, so now I get a warning here telling me not to, to power off my system and it'll come up and it'll actually begin to upgrade um, the BIOS on the system at this point. Again, this will take a, a few minutes, uh, but I'll go ahead and um, let it go real time so you can see what it takes um, through this progress bar um, as it as it redoes the BIOS. So now we've we've updated the image on the system from the USB key. We're upgrading the BIOS. When it reboots, uh, it will take several minutes that it won't normally take on a successive boots on the first boot because it'll be detecting drivers and, and doing a lot of the normal Windows things that a newly imaged system will do on the first boot because we are putting this back to a, a completely generic state um, on the system. And we've chosen to do this. So it'll be coming back kind of as you might see the system coming from the factory being shipped to you through the first time. So we're almost there now. 80%, 90% done with the flashing the BIOS. And it'll begin to reset the system. Now when the system resets, um, I won't take you through the entire Windows setup process. I'll just leave it so you can see that Windows is now beginning to start. And again, it, it will take some time during this first boot. Uh, but hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I went through the steps there of what you need to do, how you download the WISE USB firmware tool, how you download the image for the appropriate device that you're going to image, how you create the USB stick with that image, how you put it in the device you're going to image, uh, reboot it, tap the P key, and bring it up and then select that and boot and re-image device. So hopefully...